Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Wok Covent Garden. It's Wok Wednesdays once again, and this week is a healthy poached Hainanese chicken, Singapore style. Hainanese chicken rice, one of my favorites. This is actually my sister's recipe. Uh, we lived in Singapore for two years and that's when we really started enjoying food. Those memories of the hawker centers. So, we're gonna go straight on to poaching the chicken. And poaching chicken is actually a relatively simple process, but you wanna, don't wanna over poach, you don't wanna over boil your chicken. I want a little bit of ginger and spring onion on the base of my poaching liquid. Just bash your ginger, if you've got a cleaver that is. Otherwise you can roughly chop it. And the spring onion just needs to be sort of one or two small spring onions, roughly chopped into chunks. I don't mind with the poaching liquid if the ends of the spring onion are in there as well. And we're gonna start to fry these gently until they're nice and crisp and golden brown. And essentially what we're doing is we're getting the essence of ginger and spring onion into the oil. So if a good amount of oil to flavour and make sure that your pot's on a medium heat. Get your ginger and spring onion in. Well, you want to get that to a nice sizzle. And as I say, you want to see that ginger almost crisping up and going golden brown before we add the stock, your chicken, and start boiling through. Gonna add a bit of garlic. Again, just keeping them quite whole, just bash the cloves. They're more for flavour than anything else. If there's any drier bits, you might want to cut those dry bits off. You really want to bring out the fragrance of all those bits of spring onion, the garlic. Whilst that's sizzling away, you can prepare your chicken. It's always nice to use a good corn-fed chicken for this type of dish because it is a high Hainanese chicken rice, you know, the chicken's there to be showcased. Just take any dry ends off. And then just open up the wings a little. If there's extra bits of fattiness, you might want to take those bits off. You can use those bits of fat for later on when you're cooking the rice. You could put it into a stock, but it's quite useful to sort of sear a bit of ginger and flavour into the rice. So that's pretty much ready to go into the stock. Right, so the real base of Chinese cooking here, ginger, garlic, spring onion, but simple things like getting it to a crispy golden brown colour make all the difference. The oil is now nicely flavoured. So I'm gonna pour the chicken stock into that flavoured oil. You can hear the flavour lifting off the bottom of the pan. Top that up with water, just cold water. Your chicken's going in. And this needs to be fully covered, so I'll get some more water in there to cover the chicken. Season with a good pinch of sea salt. And that'll bring out all the flavor of your spices. Cover with a lid. So you wanna bring that to a boil. As soon as it's boiling, you wanna boil it for no more than 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes, on a low simmer, you switch it off and let it sit in the hot chicken stock for about 40 minutes. And that should cook 
the chicken through perfectly without overcooking the breast. So Hainanese chicken rice, Singapore style, always comes with a fresh chili sauce. It's very, very simple to make this chili sauce. We've got some rice vinegar, sesame oil, and some vegetable stock that I'm just gonna heat up, ready to churn into a chili paste. Vegetable stock, not too much vinegar. One to two spoons of vinegar is enough. I'm gonna balance out that slight sour or tartness with some palm sugar or normal sugars, fine too. About a teaspoon or so of palm sugar. Just melting that sugar through. A little bit of sesame oil. Once that palm sugar is melted, then we can use that sort of sweet sour stock to make your chili paste. To go with that, plenty of chilies. I'm putting this into the food processor. So you can just go rough chops of chili just to help it out. Now with this, you want your chili sauce to be really nice and bright red. And this will give me enough chili sauce to keep a little bit in the freezer for next time. Over to the blender. I've got my chilies. Whatever I can fit in there. A good bit of ginger and garlic. Then my hot stock, that vinegar and sugar mix. Just start with a small amount. Give that a good blend. Look at that fantastic, vibrant chili paste, just from a few simple ingredients. So next sauce that classically goes with a Hainanese chicken rice is a ginger and spring onion oil. Now that's really very simple to make. Just before I make up my ginger and spring onion oil, you can see here in this saucepan, I've got my two bits of chicken fat that I cut off. This is just to, to bring out a little bit of that fat to cook the rice, to make it a classic chicken rice. Also, you see here that my actual chicken is boiling or simmering away. That needs 20 minutes of simmering before I switch that hot stock off. Your ginger and spring onion oil, very, very simple. Nice, roughly chopped ginger. Now you can see why I like making this dish. Lots of opportunity to take out your stress. Spring onion needs to be nice and finely chopped. the white ends of the spring onion a rough chop over and then add that to your ginger. You want a good pinch of salt to bring out the oils of the ginger and spring onion. Just mix that salt into it. It will start to bring out the water before we add the oil. Now although the rest of the dish is incredibly healthy, there's no way around using hot oil 
to make this ginger and spring onion paste. Get a good amount of oil to high heat. Once that oil is smoking hot, which it clearly is, you want to sizzle your ginger and spring onion. Now you should immediately smell that essence of ginger and spring onion just pop out of that oil. So we've got our condiments nice and ready. On to the rice. Again, if you want to add flavour to your rice, no harming using a little bit of your ginger and spring onion. So I've got some jasmine rice here. You can use jasmine, basmati, long grain rice. My ginger oil here is ready. The rice grains, I'm just going to cook through slightly in that chicken fat and oil. And that will coat the rice grains so when I add the stock, you'll get nice separate but fluffy grains of rice. In terms of amount of liquid to rice, I've got two cups, rice cups of rice here. I'm going for about 1.25 or one and a quarter times the liquid to rice. So it's good to measure this out. So two cups of rice, 2.5 cups of stock. One. I'll take a couple of the bit cloves of that garlic and that will really flavour up the rice as well. And don't forget the half. So cooking rice on the hob is actually relatively simple. You want to bring it to a boil. Make sure the rice is on the base. Of course, using a plastic container with bare hands and hot stock, just go careful. I do it every day. So, cover your rice, make sure it's on a light simmer, and then when the level of water or level of stock hits the level of your rice, you want to switch the hob off completely. And that's just in time to switch off your chicken stock too. If you have got a little less water, just Cover that chicken so it cooks through for the next 40 minutes. Right, so your chicken has sat in its hot stock after that 20 minute boil for about 40 minutes. And what we classically do is grab your chicken and dunk it straight into cold water. And what that does, is it just lifts the skin slightly off the meat and stops it from feeling sort of too jelly-like. It doesn't need long in that cold water. One to two minutes. And then straight out onto the chopping board, ready to carve. When you're carving a chicken, just slice where you can. So you don't break too much of the skin. It's always good with poached chicken to keep some kitchen towel nearby because you know that there's going to be some juices flowing. Just pull that apart and you can see how succulent this chicken is actually is. 
barely any chopping required, you can carve this bit by bit. So, one leg off, turn that around, pull that apart. Simply just falls apart because it's so soft and succulent. The breast joint, just run your knife gently along one side of the spine. And you should just start to be able to pull the chicken breast off the joints. When you find that joint, you can just cut through. Last side, same principle. Just run your knife along the joint and press into it. And it should just almost fall off the bone. You know that you've cooked that well. Look for that joint and straight through. Of course, there's plenty of meat on that chicken still, so don't waste that. Well worth picking off for some chicken sandwiches. It's nice to have a combination of leg and breast serve on top of your rice. Again, slicing is better than chopping here because I don't want to break the skin too much. When you're going to put a little bit of breast, and then I really like the thigh piece and the leg joint nice and soft. You do want to serve it off the bone, it's pretty simple. Because the chicken's so soft now, you just take a couple of slices on either side of the bone. And then you should, in theory, just be able to slide that bone out like so. Turn that over and slice that thigh joint. So those bits are ready to serve up. Your rice. Got this amazing fragrance from that chicken stock. Just give it a good mix through so you get the softer grains from the bottom. Classic hawker style, Singapore hawker style way to serve. So you get a good bowl of rice on the base. Brown meat. Finish off with a prettier, I mean, that's a two person portion right there. Cucumber. Good line of cucumber. And then of course, your ginger oil. And your chili. And that is your Hainanese chicken rice. My mouth is watering. A good taster to jump back into my childhood. Take a little bit of everything. Mm. 
Now I can see why in Singapore, people queue up for this stuff. So your Hainanese chicken is all about the condiments. You've got that ginger oil, that spicy chili paste, and succulent chicken. If you like this type of recipe, and you wanna learn more, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.